Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzales held a press conference on Tuesday, May 9, 2017 to report on his trip abroad and other state matters. Passenger and cargo airlifts took prominence as Dr. Gonzales indicated that Amerijet 767 landed at the Argyle International Airport on Tuesday, May 9 and will begin regular scheduled service to St. Vincent from next month. The Prime Minister also pointed out the impact of this new move since this increases the cargo capacity. I've been informed by the agent and also by the people at AIA the agent for Marijet, that they're going to come here. They've done this flight, but the 767s are going to come regularly from Marijet from June. Why is this important? The 767 carries, has a capacity of 110 thousand pounds of cargo as against 55,000 with the 727s. But when the 727s were landing in E.T. Joshua, because of the wind factor and the configuration of that airport, that 727 was able only to take three, maximum four pallets but from the time they started to go to Argyle, there were 11 and 12 pallets, which would, would be their, their capacity. So already, you remember that earlier on there was talk, all kind of talk about how Ralph wanted to take away Agent from a marriage jet from this person. To this. I mean, I, I don't run a marriage jet, how do I want to take away agency? And I would always maintain, that whoever operating a marriage at in St. Vincent as an agent would make more money now. Because even the existing 727s would, would, would be able to land at Argyle with full capacity. And now we're talking about the 767, which is twice the capacity of the 727s. And the 767, you need the highly specialized and expensive equipment, the millions of dollars equipment, which the AIA has, which we bought, this government bought as part of the equipping of the, by IADC for this airport. Very top of the line equipment. I've been advised, everybody who, 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 who deals with the Marijet people themselves told me, it's top of the line equipment we have. And when, when, we, when we hired the gentleman from Jamaica, who's been working at the Donald Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay, which is a busier airport in Jamaica than Norman Manley. And he came and he said, listen, the equipment we have is good, top quality, but we need some redundancies. We need some additional pieces, just in case any of these were to, to, to break down. You don't want to have a big aircraft on the ground and, and you have to wait. And I, I gave the go ahead, though do, do, do it involved additional expenditure. I gave the go ahead because I want when we finish this thing. You see, you young people, I don't want when I finish with all of this thing, you know, that you say, well, Ralph, build this thing in a halfway house for you. That's a marriage yet. I want. I want, first of all, all the consumers who are listening to me. You see this thing which you have called the cell phone? And people have credit cards. You know how easy people buy things online these days? It becomes easier when you have better cargo lift to bring the stuff. It means that the persons on the ground who are selling, they have to up their game too. Because they're competing not only with who is next to them in Middle Street or Back Street, but who is on the other end of the phone. I know what they're, what they're saying to me, 
Well, Ralph, you're going to lose taxes. No, I ain't going to lose taxes. Because customs have to deal with it when it comes in too. So, and if you have greater volumes, you would expect reasonably that the unit costs will fall. Then I want the farmers to hear me. When the plane leaves here, when the 767 leaves here, it goes to St. Lucia, not to overnight, like how the 727s would overnight down in Trinidad. They leave St. Vincent, they go to St. Lucia. By one o'clock, they reach Miami. You see what can happen to your fresh fruit and vegetables? And if you have the volumes, they will go straight from here to Miami. And this is one of the things which the investors are looking at. The investors were talking to Saboto and Camilo, but Stuart Otherson, the one who is dealing with the, 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 the seafood packaging plan, mainly lobster and conch, but, but outside of the season for lobster and conch, fish. The Prime Minister used the opportunity to outline progress made by the government with Air Canada scheduled operations here for the ending of this year and also revealed other arrangements on stream. You heard Air Canada made their report publicly. They announced that they're coming out of Toronto. Coming out of the season from December the 14th to April 25th, I think, or 28th. But there's another entity which is coming out from Canada, and I'm waiting until they make the announcement too. There's going to be a short overlap over the Christmas New Year, but there's going to be movement before and after um, Air Canada. But I'm not... You know, I always say, let the airlines do the announcements. Remember I've said that? Let them do the announcements. No, I want to say to you that we will be having flights coming direct out of Miami. It, the announcements would be made by those who are responsible. And as well already that you know, we have Cal on Fridays and, and Sundays, making the particular connection first with the ATR, but just a turn around for an hour in Trinidad, with the jets going up to, to New York. And I happen to know other conversations are being held with Cal for other things. And I told you about the conversation Glenn has been having, he and his team, out of. UK. And I want to say more broadly that there are other conversations with other airlines. And there are conversations with local pilots who are interested in doing expanding their aviation business. And this government will support them in a sensible business planning going forward. The Prime Minister made an address at the Caribbean Hotel Resort and Investment Summit, CRIS, which was held in Miami and is an annual gathering of hotel and resort entities operating in the Caribbean. Other officials, mainly within the tourism industry here, were present. And I made the pitch for investment in the hotels and naturally coming upon the the, the airport, the opening of the Argyle International Airport. Mm -hmm. The Tourism Authority and Invest SVG and National Properties, who all attended, who had representation there, they prepared a, a, a video, and while I was speaking, the video was, was, um, was being displayed on the, the monitor, and um, I, was, I was able to explain the opportunities which are available for investment in this in 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 these areas both hotel and resort con, um, 
construction. There was a good team on the ground for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. From Invest SVG, there was Glen Beach. From and there, there was also from from um, uh, Invest SVG. There was Alan Alexander from National Properties because the property, national property, is very important to the whole discussion since they have a, 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 we have a lot of state lands in national properties for investment purposes. There was um, Damien Brown, there was Hans King, and, and um, Dr. Matthias was there in respect of talking also about the airport. Meetings were arranged for me with an investment entity, which we are in touch with, and with three name brands. Two of them, Camilo, I had been in touch with them and had assisted in arranging those meetings. <coughs> and two of those name brands, hotels, representatives are coming between the 15th of May and the end of June. They have to inform us of the specific time. But the discussions are promising. Prime Minister Gonzales announced the Milia Group of Hotels visit to St. Vincent, which was scheduled for Wednesday, May 10th, 2017, with the prospects of investments in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Also, according to the Prime Minister, the Virgin Atlantic Group visited the Bukoma Resort with plans of having it operationalized. The Finance Minister said he is keen to see the resort up and running for this coming tourist season. Meanwhile, on more news of investment, Prime Minister Gonzales highlighted that further developments will take place on the island of Kanawan. This adds to the recent developments of the Glassy Bay Marina. The developers in Kanawan, Mr. Pinataro, has indicated to me that he is interested, their group, they're interested in building a a hotel to take care of the pilot and crew principally for the airlines, the, 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 the planes which are coming to Canawan. In fact, the number of private jets which are coming to Canawan now, they don't have enough space for their parking and they would want Argyle to be the, the hub and that's why they have worked out with the AIA, the Argyle International Airport, an area where they're going to put down a hangar and also put a fixed base operation to service these, these, these jets. Um, and I know that they, they're actively looking for land to see where they can build the, this, this hotel. They're not in. They're not. They're not in the business of building a hotel, really, for general use, but specifically for people who 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 are gonna come for the pilots and crew for these jets. Of course, other people would be able to stay there, depending on the size that they eventually decide to build it. Um, I also know that. Camillo has been having active discussions because the cabinet has put him in charge of a, a committee and he has been working with entities within the state for, and to be involved with the state for, for the, the, the construction of a hotel to be managed, of course, by, not by the government, but by a, 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 a reputable private sector uh, entity, and we 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 have been given approvals to several Vincentians who are expanding their hotels and who are building apartments and the like. And I'm 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 happy to see we are picking up in 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 that regard. The I had the opportunity, as I said, to talk to Boot Stewart to further the discussion which Camillo and Butch Stewart's son 
one of his sons, um, which have been having about sandals for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But all these things are, they don't just happen like that. You have to work on an ongoing basis with them. Making reference to his address at the opening of the Gecko branch at South Rivers, Dr. Gonzalez emphasized the importance of boosting tourism on the community level. The government, as I indicated yesterday in, in, a, in a short speech I made in South Rivers, at the opening of the Gecko branch in South Rivers, a beautiful building, they built and equipped at a cost of 100 and sorry, $1.4 million, not $1.4 million, um, 10 times what I said there just now, $1.4 million, Eastern Caribbean. But I made the point there that what we have to do also is in the rural areas, make sure that people in the communities also benefit from tourism. The timber cottages which can be put down. From North Leeward all the way back up to North Windward and in between. And, and the government is prepared to assist persons, entrepreneurs in doing this in the same way that we are interested and have been assisting people with People who are involved in, 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 in information technology, uh, a lot of them mainly young people, in, in, um, we, we, we have borrowed a significant amount of money from the, the World Bank, but we are giving them as grants, and different people have received grants. I, 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 I think I was told a number around 20, varying sizes. Of course, you don't get all the money one time, it's done in, 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 in stages. On the 5th of May 2017, Prime Minister Gonzales participated in the Leadership and Innovation Conference, which was held in Trinidad and sponsored by the University of the West Indies Institute of Business. A number of education officials here were also in attendance. Dr. Gonzales highlighted creativity in schools within the 21st century as one of the topics being addressed. Because one of the, the issues which was being discussed in the Caribbean, what would a creative school of the, the 21st century increasingly look like? Because this is an important area for further development. I just want to say this. I don't know if the media, if you, are, if you are aware of it. I know a release came out from the office of the permanent representative or permanent representative to the United Nations. Ambassador Rhonda King concerning St. Vincent and the Grenadines' role, leadership role, in relation to creativity and innovation at the United Nations. If you haven't seen that, really there has to be some neglect out of the Ministry of foreign affairs or the lack of proper connection with all the various media houses or coming out. You've seen it? Huh? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I, I don't know. Have you all seen it? Oh, no. Well, that's, that's, you need to see it. What happened is this. Very important because Ambassador Ronda King has been working on this matter for a while. And we piloted, St. Vincent and Grenadines, we piloted a resolution at the General Assembly, the United Nations General Assembly, on the 28th of April, which is just two weeks um, gone, not quite two weeks yet. And the, the, the resolution was on creativity and innovation. And for a day to be declared Creativity and Innovation Day. And April 21st, 2018 will be the first United Nations declared Creativity and Innovation Day. And St. Vincent and the Grenadines 
is been has been given the responsibility to work with the United Nations bureaucracy in having a summit, a high-level summit on creativity and innovation on the 20th of April next year. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we sponsored the resolution and we got 87 or 88 countries um, which co-sponsored the resolution. We were the lead, we sponsored it and then we got co-sponsored by, by um, many very important countries all over the world. Canada, for instance, India, South Africa, Turkey, a, a host of countries. Um, I think Brazil was there, Mexico. And it was adopted by acclamation at the General Assembly. Ambassador King made a very important statement. Prime Minister Gonzales also noted further infrastructural developments, specifically on roads and a number of schools here that will get on the way soon. We'll bring you more on these stories on a subsequent program. Reporting for the API, I am Sheridan Lois.